What's up, everybody? It's your boy George Carmi here. We're with the Commander's Film Room. Uh, we are down to today. Big Doug is absent today, as well as Nick Ackridge, but I'm joined with the excellent Mark Bullock. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing very well. And yourself? I'm doing good, man. So uh, today's going to be a really interesting, hot topic. We're going to be learning about you know, the consensus number one quarterback in the draft. We're going to talk about Caleb Williams today, and I'm really excited about that. Um, but before we jump on into it, so the scouting combine was last week, Mark. We have free agency coming up next week. Um, let's start off with the combine before we start getting into the tape with Caleb Williams. Um, what are your thoughts on the combine? Do you hoard in high regard? Like, what do you take away from what you're trying to watch when you're watching the uh, scouting combine over the weekend? And what players do you like to look for as well? <clears throat> yeah, I, I used to put a lot more into it than I do now. Okay. Um, when, when I was a lot younger and I, I like, I didn't have access to all 22 as I, as I kind of am fortunate enough to do now. Um, mm -hmm. You, you kind of yearned for every sort of clip of a player that you could see. Yeah. Um, so I would, I'd be glued to, to the TV or in my case, the laptop watching the, um, all the drills and, and, and seeing all the guys for kind of the first time and, and, and that kind of stuff. But, but now I, I, I kind of recognize it for what it is. And, and, you know, the, the measurement stuff is important. Um, mm -hmm. It's more so, you know, there's certain measurements that are more important for different groups. Um, and, you know, the on-field drills are fun, but the, for me, the, the the kind of thing I've come to recognize is that the, the combine is more for the medical checkups and the meeting stuff that goes on behind the scenes, the stuff that we as fans never really get any kind of insight into. So um, I, I don't... I don't put too much weight into into combine workouts um and i don't think the teams put a huge amount of weight into the workouts that they certainly put weight into the numbers that they get and, and they'll have some thresholds on certain guys for yeah. certain positions but but they, they'll always be cross checks that it'll, it'll always be like you know one guy just ran four two one this week <laughs> at the combine he's super fast it's like well yeah well we kind of knew he was going to be fast from what we, what we saw on film you know so uh, if if he seemed really slow on film, you might go back and be like, "Where is this four two one speed? Where did that come from?" Um, and and yeah. cross check. But um, ultimately, you go back and you watch the film, and you're like, "Okay, I can see why he was running this fast." And I kind of knew that going in. So um, yeah, I don't, I don't put too much weight into it personally, but it, it's it's fun to watch still. Watch guys run around and move and stuff. Gotcha. Absolutely. I, th I agree with you. I think with scouting combine, it's kind of fun to put a face to a name to kind of get to know the yeah. players a little bit more, get to see them in a different element, get to see how they move. Um, is there a particular like position group that you like more watching more than the others? Something that's fun to watch for you, in your opinion? Uh, it's always fun to watch the big guys try to run 40s. Yeah. Um, and absolutely. See who, who can get you know the sub five second 40 yard dashes, and, um, and, and watching those guys do. You know, watching offensive linemen do the the on field drills are, are quite good. Um, you know, seeing them pull and 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 you you do kind of get to see there like what kind of guys are able to open their hips and move and, and pull quickly, and what guys are a little bit stiff and and can't do quite the same thing. So, um, you know, I, I there is there is some weight to it, but I I, I it, it's more for fun than than anything else. Absolutely. I think Troy Fontenew had a great job as a big guy running up and down the field, kind of showing his looseness, showing how mobile he is. He can probably play any position he wants to on the offensive line. He was fantastic. Um, before we get into free agency, was there any prospect at the common that kind of popped your eye or you thought that would be, you know, it really stood out to you or potentially be a good fit for Washington? Yeah, a couple of those offensive linemen did. Um, the the Washington guy you talked about, he, um, he, he definitely stood out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the... Uh, the the two big tackles um mims and uh latham from alabama um yeah. th those two are monstrous human beings <laughs> um and, and so they they just stand out just from looking at them um but i, I thought both of them moved pretty well as well so um yeah they, they they those i was kind of looking more at the offensive lineman than anything else and then those guys did kind of stand out gotcha all right before we jump into the tape um last question i think next time i'll see you will be next tuesday um, I, you know, the legal tampering period opens up for NFL free agency starting on Monday. Uh, for those of us that actually watch and kind of follow the league closely, we know that contracts should be flying off the board starting Monday morning, you know, by God's grace. You know, they didn't talk before Monday, but now all of a sudden these contracts are popping up. Um, Mark, is there any, I know you started a free agency series on your sub stack. Are there any particular players that you're interested in right now that you've been looking at or do you want Washington to kind of pursue? Um, I don't know if I have any, like, 
they've got to go sign this one guy. Um, I, I think it's more a case of I'm really intrigued to see what they do because they have quite a lot of holes in the roster. And, yeah, and I think there's quite a lot of guys that they, they would make a lot of sense to them. Like a bunch of the Cowboys defensive guys are free agents and on obviously they would make a lot of sense for Dan Quinn and, and Joe Witt Jr. Um, mm-hmm. to, to bring those guys over. But what we have kind of seen from this group so far is they don't necessarily go with the convention of like, okay, we, we hired Dan Quinn, so we're, we're just going to hire a bunch of guys that have worked with Dan Quinn before. Like, obviously, Joe Witt Jr. worked with him before, and, and a lot of the defensive guys did. But the offensive staff, I don't think any of them were on Dan Quinn's staff before. So um, mm-hmm. it, they, they do seem to be willing to go outside the box and, and a little bit. So it's going to be really interesting to see the, the players they do sign. Because I think Adam, Adam Peters is kind of – shot down the idea that they're going to be big spenders so mm-hmm. they're, they're not going to be targeting those big names but i think they will be active simply because they have to be because they they have so many holes <laughs> on the roster they, they've got so many roster spots to fill that, you know they, they have to go sign someone right yeah absolutely very last question before we jump into the film mark i don't know if you guys if you caught it they've been busy kind of running around cutting film for the show i appreciate that um, Cam Curl threw up an emoji, you know, I guess, you know, athletes start talking through emojis and pass this on social media nowadays. You saw the peace sign by Cam Curl throwing up a couple hours, you know, maybe about half an hour ago. Um, what are your thoughts on him returning to DC? Would you, are you, do you think he's a must sign um, free agent? Do you think, you know, is it a, is this a bad decision to let him potentially walk? Cause we don't even know what's really going on, but, or is there also safety options on the free agency market you would also want to pursue? Yeah, I mean, there, there's a few guys out there. Um, the safety str- the class is pretty strong. Um, mm-hmm. the, the, a couple of guys got tagged today, so it's not quite as strong as, as what it was projected to be. But, um, I, you know, the the one that stands out to me is is the Cowboys safety, uh, Jamon Curse, Curse who, mm-hmm. who, you know, played under Quinn the last few years. He's had his most productive um, years in the NFL under Quinn. So that would make a lot of sense. And, and he kind of feels that, that big safety that can come drop down into the box, play a linebacker. He can play a little bit of big nickel, um, fill that kind of role for that the curl does fill. So maybe you could do that on a much cheaper basis than what curl would, would be, but I still think curl is the superior player and obviously a lot younger and, and, and someone that you could build defense around. So um, I would still be looking to bring back Cam curl, but you know, do they think it's too much money for, you know, if they could get sort of 70% of the production for, you know, 10 or 15% of the price, then they're going to do that. Right. So um, that that's going to be where they have to kind of weigh up what he's worth. And and I think with so many safeties on the market, I think Cam Curl's number will come down significantly once he hits the market, because, you know, there, there's been talks of him wanting 15, 20 million a year and, and, you know, top of the safety market money and, and it'll be interesting to see a guy that doesn't have the the necessarily the, the forced fumbles or the turnover stats um mm-hmm. whether he can he can reach that kind of figure on the open market i, I don't know i i, I certainly think he's a, a good player capable of uh, worthy of being paid but um i i think the the safeties that turn tend to earn those big big bucks are are, are guys that tend to fill up the stat sheets with interceptions and, and turnovers yeah, absolutely. So we'll take a look. We'll see what happens with Cam Curl. I wouldn't mind him returning in DC. Um, I think it's kind of like maybe having him test the market and kind of offer, you know, the right of first refusal. Okay, go test out the market, come back to us. We'll potentially match it. Uh, come back to DC. But, you know, at the same time, we have a new regime. Uh, they did not draft Cam Curl. So it's a new talent evaluators within our organization. So we'll kind of see how that plays out. Um, before we jump on into it, let's pull this up. We're looking at Caleb Williams. We've got the film going ready to go. Um, yep. Mark, before we deep dive, like, is there a, a quick, like, little, what are your first impressions before you kind of deep dive into uh, Caleb Williams? <clears throat> yeah, uh, well, my first impressions was uh, this guy's really, really good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, he pretty immediately jumped to QB1 for me. Um, okay. And he, he has firmly stayed there. I, I have him in a, in a tier above um, Drake May and Jaden Daniels. And, and we've talked on this show before you can kind of interchange Drake May and Jaden Daniels a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. and, and some guys certainly have their pref- preference, but, uh, for me, they're in a second tier and, and, and Caleb Williams is, is tier one. So, um, yeah, he, he definitely stands out and, uh, hopefully these, these clips I've put together will, will show why. 
Absolutely. So it's very interesting. So, so if you guys have been following our show, this is our part three of our QB series. We looked at Jane Daniel so far. We looked at Drake May. Now we're heading down to Caleb Williams. So I'm going to pass the mic over to you, Mark, and let's get it on. Yeah. So the, the first thing I thought I would show off is the kind of thing everyone has seen is Caleb Williams has this kind of ridiculously good arm. Um, it's an elite arm. And, and I just thought I'd show this one rep where um, they've got some check down stuff on, on the bottom of the screen here. But the main thing you're looking for is this receiver is running a bit of a double move. Caleb Williams is going to kind of roll out to his right and look like he's going to hit one of these, but he's actually going to pull up and, and launch this ball down the field. I just thought I'll just show off. The, this is the arm that we're working with when you talk about Caleb Williams. Uh, he gets back. He's making this throw from his 15-yard line. So just be cautious of uh, and be aware that that's where this ball is coming from, right? Yeah. And watch where this receiver catches this ball. Catches it Amazing. almost at the opposite 15 yard line, right? So that ball has traveled a mile in the air. Um, and not only has it traveled a mile in the air, um, we'll see from the end zone angle, he hits the receiver in stride. Like the receiver doesn't like drastically slow down. He makes a slight adjustment right at the end just to make sure he's got the right path, but he, he doesn't break stride at all. So he hits his receiver perfectly in stride. It's a great throw. Um, and, That's a great. Just, Sorry. Good. I, I think that's a great clip to start off with, right? Because I think the the assumption with Caleb Williams is that he can improvise, that he can create, that he can throw off platform, but no one really talks about his arm strength. Just kind of starting off with that big bang, he can throw down the field is amazing. So these athletes, man, Milton at the combine threw like a <laughs> 70 yard bomb as well. So it's really cool watching these guys. Yeah. Um, and, and this one is a kind of another example of, of the arm, but also um, the ability to throw a little bit off platform, the, the, the accuracy and the touch as well that comes with it. So you've got this kind of, you've got a clear out over here and, you, and you're trying to hit these two crossing routes. Um, and, and Caleb is kind of looking to his left here and he's kind of going to roll or slide a little bit left, but then he's going to try to come back across this field to this crossing route, which is really, really hard to do from the position he gets himself into. But as you'll see, he kind of, um, he feels a little bit of pressure coming from this left side of the pocket. So he just kind of rolls left and, he, and he's probably thinking he wants this crossing route here, but um, as he kind of rolls out, he sees that this crossing route is actually running into a lot of space over here. Mm. So what he does is he makes this incredible kind of off-platform throw, showing off again that it's all kind of armed. There's there's not a huge amount coming from the base. And again, he hits his rece receiver perfectly in stride. And I think I've got the end zone angle on this um, that really shows just how nice of a throw this is. Again, we get this pressure. The left tackle gets his hands swiped down and, and beat inside pretty quickly here. Williams slow, slides to his left um, and then throws kind of off platform, fading away from the from the receiver and still is able to put that ball out in front, right in stride. Again, receiver doesn't break a step and, and he's able to turn up the field because of it and, and pick up big yards after the catch. So again, showing off the arm, but also the accuracy and a bit of touch as well. Absolutely. Um, and like over the past couple of days, we've been hearing about how the left side of his offensive line has been failing Caleb and he had had to kind of improvise and kind of create on his own. And that's just exemplifies it there. It came in pretty quickly. Caleb's arm strength is amazing, right? So as you mentioned, like, you know, he's off platform throwing with his upper body, which is fantastic because you have to improvise in this league. So I think it's very impressive. <clears throat> yep. Um, and, and this is a, another example, a little bit of, of the, the ability to improvise, but still from within the pocket. And um, there's two clips very similar back to back here and, and all it is is a, is a slant route but he's going to have pressure and he's going to have to drop his arm angle and he's going to show how well he can drop his arm angle and again his, his feet don't necessarily have time to get set or he kind of doesn't necessarily set them as best as he could um, but he's kind of feeling this pressure the tight end sifting across trying to cut this off as part of a play action and he's kind of feeling this getting into his face a little bit um, and he knows that he's got a small window to try to fit this behind this guy here in this window to the to the slant. So he doesn't really set his feet properly when he, he probably could, but he also has the ability to kind of get away with it. And what you see is kind of a, a dropped arm angle, um, kind of si almost sidearm, um, but he still is able to, despite that dropped arm angle, he's able to put it in a really, really good spot in the end zone angle. Um, I think shows it best. Um, he's able to put that. It's kind of a bit blurry, but you can see that's that's right on his face mask. Absolutely. Uh, with the defender draped all over him. Uh, unfortunately, the defender does manage to knock this out at the end, but mm. that's not William's fault. That's that's a that's a great placement, and and this play. Is yeah, Mark, the, show that one, one more time, if you don't mind. I love to see that one that one more time. It was a great play. 
It's funny because yeah. like you hear the Mahomes comparisons often, and there really is only one Patrick Mahomes. But like this throw right here, the little like little like almost like a baseball shortstop kind of pass right there, kind of is yeah. reminiscent of Patrick Mahomes. Did you kind of see that, that, you know, that feature right there? Quick question for you though. Like obviously we know the um, the arm strength and the talent. Are there any concerns about his footwork, or do you think the fact that he can throw it, you know, off platform is a strength that should be highlighted? What do you think about that? Uh, the ability to throw off, off platform is certainly a strength to be highlighted. His his footwork is also a real real strength when when he okay. does, uh, and we'll get to that. I've definitely got some clips of that where cool. his footwork is is actually one of his biggest strengths for me. Um, uh, but this one was just another example of, of basically the exact same thing we just saw. Uh, this time you've got a free rusher off the edge, and and uh, he's trying to hit that slant for that that touchdown. This time he's a little bit more justified because he's feeling this free rusher. So he's like, I've got to get this ball out now. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the receiver hasn't even made his break yet. The DB is still there, um, but he's an anticipating it, feeling that pressure. He doesn't really set his feet. It's all sidearm. Um, but again, he puts it just in an outstanding spot and the receiver makes the catch. And um, you'll see it again from this angle. He's dropping his arm down, real sidearm angle there. Um, again, falling away from throw, obviously not ideal. Uh, but he has the arm to get away with it. And again, he's put it right out in front of the receiver where, where only the receiver can make a play. So, um, and, and it's high, so the DP doesn't have a great chance of making the play and his, his receiver makes it. So again, the ability to throw from different arm angles, different arm slots, um, and, and not necessarily be able to get his feet underneath him, still being able to deliver an accurate ball is, um, is really impressive. Um, and then I thought we'd move on to uh, an example of a little bit of touch and uh, um, some anticipation as well. Uh, so we've got a, a little slot out with a, a clear out here um, as his first read. And then his second read, which is where the ball's going to go, is this tight end kind of seam bender kind of over route. Um, he's going to come up the seam and kind of bend it around the, the second level of coverage uh, or the underneath coverage um, and, and then, then try to cross the face of this safety here. So. Um, We'll see how this plays out. Uh, fakes the play action. Caleb's looking to his right, and 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 maybe he could well throw this, but this defender hasn't really cleared out of the area yet, or the outside receiver hasn't got off the line uh, as quickly as possible. So he kind of hesitates there, and, and he thinks, "Nah, I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to come back across the middle." And you can kind of see these guys are uh, the linebackers are kind of one of them has bitten heavily on the play action, is now trying to match the running back. The other's trying to get back into the middle, and that leaves this space for this tight end. So he throws a nice ball and the end zone angle is really the, the one we want to see of this because you get to see uh, the touch and the kind of anticipation from Caleb. And when when he comes back across the middle, at this point, his head's just come back across the middle. He could potentially try and he certainly, as we've seen, the arm is good enough. He could try and fit this in this small window here and hit, it, it, hit the tight end in the first window. But instead of trying to force this into this tight window and potentially leading this uh, this safety uh, sorry this tight end into this linebacker what he does is um sees all this open field over here and kind of leads his tight end with a nice touch layered throw out out here rather than in this first window he hits this second window um and you can see like he just pauses for a second he could probably he could almost well he definitely could fit this ball in here mm -hmm. but there's more yard after the catch opportunity if he floats this one over here um, so again, he gives the tight end the eyes by looking at that. Uh, sorry, he gives the linebacker the eyes by looking at the tight end, and you can see how the linebacker, the linebacker, kind of comes back across to the tight end. Uh, but he lays this one out over the top, gets the linebacker going the wrong way. Nice touch throw. Right tight end runs onto it, and um, good play over the middle. Um, so that's some of the the nice touch uh, that you, that you can do. Um, we, you talked about kind of footwork and, and movement in the pocket and. I said that it was one of his, for me, one of his biggest strengths, and um, it really is. Uh, he plays with a really, really good base a lot of the time, um, and that's something that you see a lot of quarterbacks when they come out of college. You often hear uh, the footwork could use with, you know, improving, and, and uh, they're, they're a little bit happy feet in the pocket, or they 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 have a, a, a kink in their footwork where they, they overstride or they understride and, and that can cause some accuracy issues with Caleb Williams he plays with such a, a sound base like it's it's not it's wide but not too wide and it's the feet aren't panicked they're constantly ready to throw but they're calm um, and you'll see that here um, we've got a little over out here and we've got a, 
another kind of crossover from the slot and you got to check down on the outside and in the end he's going to come back to this um deep route from the slot uh, but he's going to feel some pressure in the pocket and you're going to see how well he, he can kind of move around in the pocket um all the while keeping a nice base um and you can see how he gets some pressure in the pocket but finds a lane and he keeps himself moving in the pocket um and that's when as he moves up he can kind of see this safety is biting up on this thing uh so he's got this receiver over the top and he makes a nice throw over the top great throw, great throw I, again in stride um uh, ability to get after the catch and and this this angle will show a little bit better the footwork and the ability to climb the pocket um he fakes the handoff and, and he's kind of immediately feeling pressure from this side that that isn't necessarily there but you know he doesn't i i think he doesn't trust trust his left tackle by this point <laughs> in the season yeah, uh, yeah. and he he probably has good reason to so he he's kind of bailing out a little bit to his right but he's all the while looking down the field and he's keeping a nice solid base keeping his feet underneath him and that gives him the ability to kind of okay i've got a clean pocket actually i can climb and get back up the pocket and he does some nice climbing up the pocket and you can see how he gets his feet back underneath him mm -hmm. eyes are up feet are underneath him gets himself set and delivers a real nice ball straight in stride to his, his receiver again um so and this That's is another one yeah yes. go ahead that's just an ideal state of a quarterback. That's what you want in today's league. You want somebody that's, you know, be not necessarily paranoid in the pocket. You want them to be kind of poised, have their eyes on field, throwing with anticipation. Did a really good job with that. Um, before we continue on our next play, you know, we, we you and I talk every single week. We talked about the USC offense, I believe, over the you know the last month or so. And you talked about like some of the uh, deficiencies that, that, that they offer there. I'm just kind of curious what you what you meant by that. I know you and Nick were like, hey, the USC offense had some flaws to it. I was kind of curious what, what that was all about. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's not a great offense. It, it doesn't give the quarterback a lot of outs. Um, okay. And so um, I think I included a clip or two of that in here. But uh, essentially, like, a lot of it is a lot of the offense seems to be we're going to send a bunch of guys deep in different directions and let Caleb kind of figure it out mm. uh, and you know Caleb was good enough to figure it out a lot of the time um, mm. but there was not a lot of structure around him there wasn't a lot of like hey we're, we're going to run you know the, the classic west coast like we're going to run a drive concept and we're going to run a, a dagger concept and a sale concept and, and we're going to have you read one two to three and and work on time and stuff there, there was some obviously some progression reading and, and we'll get to that but mm -hmm. um the structure wasn't great around him it, it was a lot of like hey here's a bunch of routes go make it work and um i, I mean there was more to the offense than that obviously like Lincoln yeah, yeah. he's a, a very good play caller and, and a very established good high quality college coach but um the structure this year just wasn't there um and, and it was too much too reliant on Caleb Williams ability to go off script and, and create and again we're going to I'm going to get into that but um yeah it just the structure wasn't great and it wasn't it there was no outs for him um so um so yeah we'll get back to this clip here and then this is another one where he, he climbs the pocket and um fires the ball over the middle um so we've got a deep crawl on the outside we've got a deep out here but the main thing we're looking at is this slot route which is just running straight up the seam um we got a big heavy blitz look from i believe this is washington um and we'll see the kind of they bail out of it and it's only a four-man rush but they kind of get pressure off the edges and and caleb kind of he works outside and, and he probably could take this and i'd argue he probably should uh, but he doesn't like that read for whatever reason. Sometimes quarterbacks don't like like a read. Um, maybe they maybe he thinks this guy's closer than he is, or mm -hmm. whatever it is. He doesn't quite like the read, so he comes back over the middle to to that seam route. Um, and maybe it's a case of you know he sees a safety biting up and and a corner bailing back. He's thinking he's got inverted coverage, so he can attack the middle of the field. Um, so that's what he's doing. He's come back and over the middle to the to this seam route, and you can kind of see from here. You'll see from the end zone angle better. Um, you kind of got a split in the pocket um, where pressure is starting to get to him, but there is a bit of a, a lane for him to climb. Uh, and so that's what he does. He climbs nicely, keeps his feet underneath him, delivers a great ball over the middle, and his, his guy drops it. Um, but again, we'll see the we'll see the footwork here. You can see how he's got his feet in a nice, st stable base. They're in the ground, ready to throw whenever he needs to. Um, he, again, he's looking outside here, and then he comes back over the middle, and you'll see his feet adjust as he comes back over the middle to get himself lined up to his second read 
um, then he spots that lane and you can see how nicely he climbs the pocket, climbs the pocket, anticipates that this guy's going to come into this window and delivers a, a perfect ball and his guy just drops it, unfortunately. Mm. But, <laughs> great throw. That was a great throw. Um, so we talked about, as I said, there was some progression stuff. That it, it was uh, fairly basic progression stuff, uh, but this is an example of it. Um, so uh, here, his first read is this slot hitch. Um, and again, this is kind of an example of kind of how bad the structure was. It's not a particularly inventive play, but um, you've got a, a slot hitch as your first read. Um, but this defensive end is going to drop out into coverage and kind of sink into that throwing lane. So he's not going to like it. Um, so he'll set up to throw to this slot hitch and then not like it and reset to the backside and, and be on time for this backside curl. Um, so we'll run this through and you can see he gets his feet aligned. He's ready to throw to this slot hitch. And he's probably talented enough and, and got a strong enough arm that he could rip that in there. But he sees that defensive end dropping off and he thinks that's just a bit of a threat. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm not going to take that read. But he's got himself nicely aligned again. Feet base wide and underneath him ready to deliver the ball. Um, doesn't like it. So he flips his hips, goes back across the field, com completely back across the field um, to outside the numbers with his curl outside here. And he's on time because the curl hasn't made its break. But again, feet underneath him, ready to throw. Um, this safety is probably a, a little bit of a uh, tight, makes this a tight read. Um, and, and ideally, he wouldn't be in the way and you'd be able to throw this as he's breaking. But Caleb doesn't really mind. He knows he's accurate enough to make this throw. And, and he throws to the kind of, kind of the back shoulder. He throws outside and leads the receiver outside away from this coverage. Um, and so again, he gets his feet set underneath him, makes the throw as the receiver's coming out of the break, ball comes out, puts it on him, and, and um, just a nice throw, good progression. And again, you'll see the feet here, immediately set, ready to make that throw, ball cleats in the ground, nice wide, stable base, ready to deliver the throw. Doesn't like it, sees this defensive end dropping out, immediately flips his hips, gets himself back across the field. Again, stable base, ready to deliver the throw. As soon as he wants to, takes that hitch, gets the ball out and, and hits his guy in the numbers. So, um, and it's on time progression stuff. And yeah, so uh, what, yeah, go ahead. I'll say my immediate takeaway so far from Caleb Williams is great base, great throwing on timing, loves to remain in the pocket. Those with the anticipation. He, it's looking really impressive for me so far. I got, like watching, you know, tape bar for bar between this quarterback and the last two that we see. And Caleb Williams does look very impressive so far. Um, let me dive into the um, comments real quickly, get the conversation sure. going. Um, Trell said, that boy is good. What's up, Trell? Trell is a big uh, Caleb Williams uh, believer. I agree. Mark's making me a believer right now. Uh, Colin Dumfrey, thank you for he's a good fan of the show. He said he got a base like Messi. I don't know about that. You might know more than me, Mark, with the whole soccer aspect. Um, let's take a look at what David said. David from Glasgow Skin said their defense was also so awful. There were times you had to chase points, which didn't help. Of the five games they lost last season, the, lot, the least amount of points they gave up was 34. David, I heard the exact same thing with that. Um, I'm going to ask you a follow-up question in a moment about that, uh, Mark, if you don't mind. And sure. then, then Charles said, Caleb is just as dangerous in the pocket as he is on the run, which I can definitely see that as well. He seems very creative in the pocket, and I'm really impressed by that so far. So I'm um, going back to this, and you know, Mark, it's kind of hard to. I love that. I love your breakdown. So I want to put a lot of pressure on you. But David talked about kind of like you know coming from behind. Do you, do you see that Caleb Williams potentially presses too much at, at any given point? And have you caught that from him? Is his poise there, like, or just it, he had did that really pop out to you from the film? I'm just kind of asking. <clears throat> um, I, I wouldn't say I see him pressing too much. Okay. Uh, certainly not from you know playing from behind uh, and trying to catch up. Um, okay. I, I I would say. The issues for him come more from, uh, as we kind of talked about, the structure of the offense. They mm -hmm. they don't give him a lot of outs and they kind of force him into situations where he has to improvise and he has to go off script and he has to try to scramble around and, and try to make the play himself. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that can certainly come across as, you know, pressing and trying to do too much. But it was when when you when you get the all twenty two rather than just the broadcast angle where you, where you can actually see what the routes the receivers are running and, and you see the kind of structure of what the offense was or I guess the lack thereof the structure um, you know that you see you understand okay he was put in the situations where he had to kind of go off script and, and try to create and, and the, obviously the hope is that he hasn't been 
kind of forced into this mindset where he has to do every play and, and when when he's provided with some actual structure as we can kind of see in, in these clips like he can actually play on time and in rhythm um, and within the structure of an offense um, it's just he wasn't provided that kind of situation frequently enough gotcha. um, so oh thanks Mark uh, and then yeah Sorry, I was saying, and thank you, Terrell, Colin, and uh, David for the comments. I appreciate it. I think we're, there might be some time at the end of the show for an actual yep. Q&A session if you guys are interested. So definitely dial that up. And Mark, back to you, bro. <clears throat> yeah, um, so this was the exact same play that we just saw, just in a different game, this time against Oregon. Again, we got the, the starch hitch and the, and the backside curl. Um, and this time, um, they bring a, a safety blitz from, from deep. And, and um, again, you get kind of a dropper in, in the throwing area, and he doesn't he doesn't like this this slot hitch. He's kind of got the slot corner ready to jump it, and, and he, he does kind of get in. You can see he's got that again that wide base. He's ready to throw, and he's anticipating it, and he's even begun his throwing motion. The ball is separated, so usually that's when you start t- talking about a, a throwing motion that started when when he goes from his hands together to separating to make the throw, and you can mm-hmm. see his his hand is separated. The ball started the the throwing motion. Um, but then he just catches the flash of this guy and he thinks that's not quite worth the risk. And, and Caleb's certainly talented enough to, to get that ball to that guy in that time. But um, I, I don't mind him being conservative and, and not taking that risk. So um, so he, he pulls the ball back and, and he immediately gets himself lined back up to, to his, his backside read, which is that backside curl. Um, and he gets kind of pressured from you know these, these guys in the pocket are, are pushing him. So again, he, he calmly kind of slides away from that pressure, gets his feet reset and, and and delivers that throw to that backside curl, still relatively on time. And, and you'll see it better from this angle. Get again, wide base, ready to deliver that throw instantly, begins the throw motion and is, is ready to go, doesn't like it, pulls it down, immediately gets himself reset back to, to, his, to his left and then is ready to make that throw. Feels a bit of pressure, so just kind of calmly slides in the pocket, gets his feet underneath him, makes that throw under pressure and, and finds his guy again hitting in between the numbers. So um, he's uh, overall in terms of a guy that's able to operate from the pocket, he's a, a very, very polished footwork quarterback where he, where he's a, he has such a good base. His feet are so calm um, he's, and that provides him this foundation to be able to do all the other stuff that he's able to do. Um, but he's also so good moving within the pocket and um you know, we'll we'll get to the stuff where he scrambles around and, and creates off script, but his first and foremost priority is to throw the ball. Um, mm. and, and as we've seen on some of those clips where he's moving within the pocket, he's he's keeping his eyes downfield, looking to throw the ball, um, and, and rather than take off running, um, even though he's certainly very very capable of taking off running. And I think if I'm if I've edited this together, uh, <laughs> this is where we see a, a clip of him taking off running. We've got a little read option play, and, and this is an example of of the athletic ability that he does have and, and he can be involved in the read option and the run game um and so against washington here we got just a simple read option play uh defensive end is crashing very hard inside on the run uh, linebacker hasn't quite scraped to the edge um as you would hope from a defensive perspective so caleb williams pulls that ball out and then suddenly that linebacker does appear um and he's like okay i'm in a bit of a bad spot but Caleb Williams is an athlete. So he goes and sells a little stutter step, gets outside, dodges the tackle, and mm. then <laughs> makes a nice little spin move, <laughs> makes a DB miss. You'll see it from the end zone angle here again. Kind of, again, gives a little stutter, is faking, cutting back inside, gets the linebacker to stop his feet, bursts back outside, beats him to the edge, and then gives a nice little spin move. <laughs> it's not oh, necessarily wow. the most, you know, amazing spin move that you'll ever see, but it was effective. It was um, effective. So, hey, real quick, Mark, just to sorry to interrupt yeah. you. Um, just by chance, I noticed a couple of RPO um, plays within the cut up so far. Is that a big staple of the USC offense, or just kind of just by chance we happen to see a couple here or there? <clears throat> um, yeah, it's certainly within the, 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 the USC offense. They definitely have RPOs and, 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 and that stuff in, included. Um, I wouldn't say it's reliant on them, but they, okay. they are certainly very much involved. Um, so, um, but yeah, this this is so we've seen the athletic ability, the ability to um, to run, uh, to move, um, and this is that gets us into the off script stuff. Um, and so this this is a really really good example of his ability to go off script and 
why the structure of the offense kind of forces him to do that. Um, so what you'll see here from the defense, they've only got three defensive linemen. It's just a three-man rush. Um, and what USC has is they have a curl route and a hitch route, and then they've got another hitch route in the slot on this side. It's essentially, the worst part about this is this hitch route breaks right in front of this curl route. So you can see, like, Caleb's perspective from right here, like, if he wants to throw this curl route, this hitch route's in the way. So if there's a defender in front of the hitch Absolutely, route, yeah. the way he can throw that curl. So that's the kind of things I'm talking about with the, restru- the structure of the offense. It's just, mm-hmm. it's not, the details are not well designed. Um, uh, and again, again, you've got three routes that are all kind of just stopping and then doing nothing. Um, and then you've got this seam route that if a safety attaches to, and you're relying on this go route, which again, if a safety attaches to, you've got nothing to go to. And that's exactly what happens here. So um, Caleb's got five receivers wide, but three of them basically do nothing. And two of them, as I say, two of them at the top of the screen. If the slot is covered, the curl's covered. Um, so, and as we'll see, he, he looks at this hitch and he probably could throw that right away. Um, but it's also a three man rush. Uh, we're down in the red zone and, and we want to try to score a touchdown, obviously. Um, and, you know, picking up every yard is, is something we can do. Um, but this corner's kind of peeling off and, and maybe we think, okay, if the corner's peeling off, we can possibly throw this thing behind it. Um, then he doesn't necessarily see the safeties there. And, and as he hesitates, he then kind of sees, okay, that safety's there. I can't throw this ball behind that corner. And now I can't really throw this hitch route either. So I've got nothing. This side of the field is dead. Um, so we'll come back across to the left side of the field. And as we see here, the curl is, is open because there's no, the, the corner's well off, but he can't throw that curl because the hitch is in the way uh, and the hitch is covered. Um, so his only real option is, can I throw this kind of seam corner route, but the safety's attaching to it. So he has nothing. We've got dead because of the bad design, dead because of covered, 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 covered. Everything is covered. But it's only a three-man rush, and, and you'd see a lot of other quarterbacks just take off running here. But Caleb wants to throw. So what he does is he stays in the pocket. He stays calm, keeps feet calm, keeps looking around, waiting for something to happen. Uh, backs up a little bit, again, kind of telling his receivers, okay, I need you to kind of start moving and doing something. And you can see he's got three guys, four guys kind of not doing anything. <laughs> um, and, and so he starts backing up and moving around, trying to tell his receivers, hey, I need you guys to move. Then he sees a lane and he starts scrambling out this way. But again, rather than just taking off running, he go, keeps it flat, keeps himself behind the line of scrimmage, trying to look for a potential opening to throw the ball. And as he does that, he spots his receiver breaking back outside mm. uh, while this other receiver comes down flat. And so he then rips this to the back of the end zone, as you'll see, rips it there. Again, on the money, perfect ball, Amazing perfect play. throw. Beautiful. So again, you see in the pocket here, he's he's nice and calm. He's, he's not panicked. His feet are always underneath him. He's ready to move, ready to throw at any given point. Um, and then he finds his option and, and delivers a great throw on the run. Perfect in stride again. Excellent ball. So that that kind of gives an example of how bad the, the structure of the USC offense Absolutely. was at times last year. Absolutely. Um, and, and why Caleb Williams was forced to go off script so often. Um, but you can kind of see the the upside of that is you have a quarterback that's very, very good at going off script now uh, because <laughs> he's had a lot of practice at it. Um, and so you get into some kind of crazy plays. And, and this is this is one of those where it's kind of a crazy play where you've got a bunch of routes. These don't really matter. Uh, I'll just let it start running. And, and you'll see Caleb Williams kind of, again, going off script. And um, he doesn't really, he could possibly take the flat, but he's got kind of a guy there. You could possibly think about this backside crosser, which he probably is thinking about. Um, possibly could come all the way back to this, but that's probably not really in his mind because he's got a safety over the top and it's probably more of an alert if there's no safety. Um, so he thinks about coming back to this check down, then feels pressure in his face and is like, okay, I can't take that. So he takes off running. Um, again, avoids another defender and then makes a nice throw. And you don't, I don't think you can tell from that angle that he made the throw kind of throw he makes. You'll see it from this angle, <laughs> the <laughs> kind of craziness that this is. Uh, you know, I'm just going to make two defenders miss, and then I'm just going to kind of lob this over my head. A hook shot. 
<laughs> a little hook shot over the top to the to the running back and, and pick up a first down. Yeah, real quick, let's get a shout out to the, um everyone in the chat. James, what's up, man? He said, "Evening, all. What's up, James? How you doing?" Uh, Trail was re- you know referencing the last play. He said that was a beautiful recognition. I agree with him. And I think the last play prior to the one you just showed just kind of symbolizes who he is, right? He had so much poise in the pocket. He ran flat, could have easily ran for a couple yards. But not only did he hold the poise, he also basically threw the ball with anticipation to have the wide receiver go get it, which I love. And this is my favorite comment of the show so far. Trell once again said, making steak out of spam. I love that. It's fantastic. <laughs> I gotta make a t-shirt out of that. That's great. <laughs> Trell, very good. Right, back to you, Mark. <clears throat> yeah, uh, so this this was probably one of the most crazy plays I've, I've seen from, from Caleb in terms of going off script. Uh, this is, I think this was fourth and one. He was either third and one, but I think it was fourth and one late in the game against Washington, and, and they needed a score to come back. And um, I believe what they've called here is basically a quarterback draw, trying to run the quarterback up the middle and, and, and pick up that one yard. Uh, but as he kind of starts to run this, he kind of feels that penetration immediately, and he takes off a little bit, feels that penetration. is like, okay, I, I can't run this. There's no way I'm getting that one yard. Uh, so instead of trying to run it, he kind of just turns his back, spots down here he's got a receiver running a go route one-on-one and i don't know how he does this he just kind of pulls up and just goes yeah i'm just gonna throw a 40-yard bomb down the field to the back shoulder and i'm gonna find my receiver perfectly and and this angle you kind of see it a little bit better again the quarterback draws what they're trying to do it's not there because this big defensive tackle in the middle has blown up the the offensive line and uh caleb just spins out of it keeps calm and, and launches this ball and again finds his throws back shoulder a fade to to this receiver and you know the db has no chance probably didn't think that ball was anywhere near him um and scores a touchdown on a fourth and one quarterback draw you know it, it's it's just incredible the ability to go off script um, yeah, he, it seems like he has all the tools mark i know like going into this film study we learned about how he's moves in the pocket can buy time a magician i think what i'm walking away from as well is for one i think the offensive line is, is definitely need to be improved for sure and then two i just think he has this like oh, great arm strength he definitely can push him i was surprised by that i didn't think he had the ability to kind of unleash it 40 yards on the back foot it's kind of letting the rip so it's impressive oh, yeah. so very good. yeah his, his his arm is insane he can he makes everything look really easy and uh, i tweeted out a clip a few weeks ago of him rolling to his left and, and chucking in a ball like just like a flick of a wrist like 40 yeah. yards down the field while rolling yeah. to his left and i said in the tweet i was like kayla williams is, is capable of some incredible things and most of the replies were like yeah but this isn't a great play and i'm like what are you talking about you go <laughs> you go outside and try to throw run to your left and throw 40 yards down the field on the top yeah yeah uh, and see how well you do it's insane throw um but so the, obviously the the off script ability is fantastic and it's kind of one of those must have things of, of the modern nfl uh, unfortunately there's obviously some downsides to it and, and as we kind of talked about the usc offense kind of forced him one way or another either by structure or lack of protection into doing it a little bit too often and it, and it kind of came across as being hero ball and trying to force things um and, and this is one of the interceptions that came as a result of it against notre dame um they've got a, a variation of, of y cross which is um something you'll see from from the usc offense quite a lot you've got uh, a hitch on the outside with a slot fade and then you've got the cross from from the backside slot um Caleb's going to feel a lot of pressure and he's going to roll out to his left and, and then he's going to try to throw back across the field to, to this uh, crosser um, and we'll see how this plays out. So um, you got the pulling guard trying to pull across as part of the play action fake. He gets tripped up by the center, so he doesn't quite get there. That means the running back's trying to pick up this edge defender, which obviously isn't going to work well. Um, you've, you've got the right tackle is struggling. Uh, you got the right guard or the center struggling to, to pick up the the guard. The, the right guard would have been blocking the end and pulling. Um, so there's a lot of pressure, and Caleb pretty much has to abandon what he's reading over here and immediately spin out, run to his left. And again, he does well, buys himself some nice time. And at this moment in time, you can see what exactly what he wants to do. He wants to reset his feet and hit this crosser because there's space there. Um, the problem with doing this while running is that he, he doesn't see the full vision of the field. What he doesn't see is this corner out here mm-hmm. is reading him, is watching him, and he does he's yes, he's occupied by this outside receiver, but while he's watching Caleb and he can see that Caleb 
resets his feet and is throwing back to the middle, he can just peel off and drop into that throwing lane. And that's that's what happens, unfortunately, when, when you try to reset your feet and throw back across the middle. Again, you got this corner peeling off and, and ready to, to make that, that interception. And that's exactly what happens. And if he hadn't made it, the trailing corner might well have made the interception as well. So um, I think I got the, got the end zone angle, which I'll just let it play through. Um, again, that pressure is kind of insane and he does well to get out of it. And at this point, you can see why he wants to make this throw. But even from this end zone angle, you can't see that corner out here that's, that's yeah. ready to jump this. Um, so, you know, corner gets it, jumps it. And, and that's kind of the, that's the risk. And that's that's the things you're going to have to live with. And, and, and like, you, you know, know, and honestly, Mark, you know, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like it's kind of forgivable in that regard, right? I feel like he was blitzed pretty heavy. He was kind of pigeonholed to one side of the field. He had his eyes on the field, so it was easily readable by the cornerbacks. So potentially they could just jump on that as well. And that that, that one cornerback was hidden there. So I agree with, I don't know, it's my, my perspective. I don't know if you agree with that or not. Or do you think it's a uh, fatal flaw or what do you think? <clears throat> it's 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 forgivable to an extent, um, but every interception is is a huge play in the NFL. That's true. Um, That's true. Absolutely. And, you know the, the ability to scramble and extend plays and, and stuff is great. Uh, it's not always the right decision to make the throw. Like how many times did we say last year Sam Helm just needs to throw that ball away um, gotcha. and, and accept that it's a bad play and move on? Um, so you know I, I think that is something you're going to have to accept. Certainly early in his career with Caleb Williams is that he's going to have those plays um, where it's going to look like a really bad interception. Um, mm. But you're going to have to live with it because the upside is, yeah, he'll throw one interception every now and again doing that, but he'll also create four or five touchdowns doing that. And you have to kind of live with, okay, well, we'll take the bad interception every now and again to have the four or five touchdowns that he creates because of it. So um, so the, the, thing that you, the thing that you have to think about with Caleb Williams is um, – we kind of talked talked about how the structure for for the USC offense is, is bad and doesn't always give them options, and so he kind of got into a mindset of I need to make the play myself. And when the occasion did arise that actually there was an option for him, there were times where he turned down the option going hunting for the big play, and that's that's where you have to try to coach that out of him and be like, yeah, we know you're capable of doing all this incredible stuff off script and creating big plays on your own. And this turns out to be a really positive play for him. But from a coaching perspective, it's very risky one. And it's one where you want him to just take the option given to him. So what we have here is um, we got a slot fade and we got a little pivot out. Um, And where Caleb really should go is this pivot out as he works out to his right. Um, And he ends up scrambling and coming back to a route over here. But you'll see, you know, as the play progresses, he checks the safety rotation in the middle of the field. Doesn't quite like what he's got over here, so he comes back to his right. And as he feels that pressure and starts rolling a little bit to his right, again, nice wide base, ready to deliver the ball. Got an open receiver in the flat. Take it. Take your take your check down. Take your medicine. Let him run up the field. You've got a corner bailing out here, and, and this guy's got to try to go make that play. That's uh, probably a first down with some yard of the catch potential, yeah, right? Mm-hmm. But he doesn't take it. He goes hunting for a bigger play because he's like, ah, this is an underneath throw and I know I can make something bigger. Um, again, no idea why he's not just taking this. There is tons of space. This corner starting to peel off, but, you know, and this guy's starting to catch up, but that, I mean, it's wide open, right? Um, so he doesn't take it and ends up kind of feeling that pressure in the end, uh, kind of by holding on to the ball, he's forced that pressure to arrive. Um, so he spins out of it. And this is, again, where... You know, Caleb Williams is kind of incredible because he's able to get away with this. Um, he spun out of that pressure and suddenly this receiver that was oh. running a curl and, and doing nothing and trying to get over the middle and get open for him has pivoted back outside and, and he ends up completing this pass out here. But he shouldn't have got to this situation. He should have just mm-hmm. taken the check down. Um, so again, this is really amazing. Throwing to his left, throwing the ball, great pass down the field. Getting his, and he hits his receiver mm-hmm. in stride right at the sideline. It's like it, the all the traits that you that we've talked about: the, the accuracy, the ball placement, the the velocity on the throw, the ability to throw on the run um, and create a script. It's incredible. But if right there, he can take his check down and move on to the next play. And that's what you need to see a little bit more from him. You you don't want him to get into this mindset of, you know, I don't trust the structure of the offense, so I go and have to do this crazy stuff um, constantly. 
because yes it works like it paid off here but you'd rather him have just taken the easy stuff and and take what the defense gives you and move on so real quick yeah. mark we talked about drake may like a couple of weeks ago in our own um, breakdown and i think one of the criticisms for may is that he's too aggressive and has boneheaded plays and kind of arrogant with his arm is that a problem with caleb williams you see that by any chance or not really to an extent yes um okay kind of like what we just saw there where like he could have taken that check down very easily he should have taken that check down very easily um but i think he went kind of big play hunting and, and he could definitely be guilty of that at times um okay. and again a lot of it is kind of forced upon him by the structure of the offense where they don't give him an out and he has to do that um or you know he's under pressure straight away and he's having to scramble around and, and create off script himself but um when the play is there to be made, the, the easy play, he, he does need to learn um, to play within the structure a little bit better and, and, and take those those easy wins um, and move on to the next play. Doesn't Not every play has to be a you know crazy scramble around and, and throw down the field. Um, but I, I would imagine in an offense with a much better structure and, and um, better protection, we will see Caleb Williams play a lot more within that structure and take those easy wins um, rather than feeling like he has to scramble around and make the plays himself. Um, and kind of the reason I say that is you see traits of him doing really good stuff from from the pocket as a, as a kind of pocket quarterback. And, you know, the, the scrambling around stuff is great, but this, I think this is the last play of my clip, but this is, um, this is an example of the good quarterbacking from the pocket. We got Washington's defense has seven defenders lined up on the line of scrimmage. Uh, Caleb has, you know, five offensive linemen plus the running back, so he knows he's outnumbered. Um, so instead of, you know, it, it could well be that they're bailing out from what looks like a cover zero. It's kind of it, pretty obvious that they're trying to show cover zero with man to man across the board and the rest of the defenders up on the line of scrimmage. So we we talked about it with Jaden Daniels being able to adjust the protection and, and make sure you're protected. Um, instead of adjusting the protection, what Caleb Williams does is adjust the route. Um, so you'll see him here as we, you can see he just turns to his receiver and, and makes a little signal to his receiver and that adjusts the receiver to run a, a real quick slant route, anticipating all of these guys are coming and we're just going to run that slant right behind them and, and, and rip it over the middle and, and pick up a first down. So that's what he does. Rather than what we saw with Jaden Daniels was he brought his tight end in to help protect. He brought the back across to help protect on that edge and, and buy himself time to deliver the ball down the field. Instead, Caleb does goes the opposite way and says, okay, these blitzes can come, I'm just going to beat them with my arm and I'm going to adjust the route. Um, so he adjusts the route, snaps the ball, and you'll see they mostly do come, a couple of them bail out late as kind of late droppers trying to get into the throwing windows, but it's not well, well enough done. And then Caleb is, is, again, wide base, ready to throw, immediately hits that slant route over the middle in a fairly tight window, you know, moves the, moves the chains. Um, so it's really good stuff. Again, nice wide base and sees this guy dropping into the window. So he delivers it over the middle into the second window, um, hits his guy, perfect ball again in stride um, and, and moves the chain. So there, there's potential, there's a lot of potential for Caleb Williams as a pocket passer, as well as obviously all the off scripts. Um, Absolutely. So I, that, that's kind of what I wanted to show with this kind of group of clips that I put together was um, there's a lot more to him than just hey, I'm a scrambling quarterback that runs around and creates off script because that's all great. Um, but the, 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 the base, the, the fundamentals is really good. The accuracy is really, really good. Um, and the arm strength is great. And um, I think there is potential there, as we kind of just saw, that there is a mental side to him that like understands that, hey, there there's certain looks that I need to adjust things and, and change protection or change the route. And... Um, and so there's potential there. Um, there's obviously going to be a learning curve because the structure of that USC offense wasn't great. But um, uh, so he's going to have a lot to learn when he gets to the NFL. Um, but um, I think the potential for him to, to be able to beat guys with not just his arm or his legs, but also with his mind um, is is really good. Absolutely. So what I took away, especially from the last couple of clips, is I love how he, he can kind of adjust in real time. I also like how he throws the open windows and creates the yards after the catch for his wide receivers. I feel like that's a great strength of his, something that's absolutely needed um, in the NFL nowadays. 
Um, I have a couple questions for you, um, but I also want to open up some questions to the chat. You guys are more than welcome to jump on in and ask Mark any question you'd like. We have about 18 viewers that are live right now. I'm going to throw one to you from Colin. Uh, Colin Dumphy said, um, we talked about that previous play where he kind of improvised and threw across the field and had an awesome dynamic play, but there was that initial check down on the right side of the field. Yep. Um, do you think that, uh, do you feel like height or any limitations will be you know, a, a concern for Caleb Williams? And to be honest with you, I think walking away from the combine, he was was measured at 6'1", you know, almost 6'2". I think he had some, he wasn't necessarily a short quarterback, if that makes any sense. So what are your thoughts, Mark? <clears throat> Yeah, I, I, I don't think it was a height issue, certainly not on that particular play. I, I, I think that there was enough windows um, for him to have seen that. And, and you know, he moved around as well. He, he was, he definitely, there's no reason he shouldn't have seen that. And I, I think the reason why he kept rolling to his right at first is because he did see it and, and thought about throwing it, but then thought I could make a bigger play. Um, so I'd be surprised if he didn't see that. Um, the, the height and kind of visibility of the field doesn't didn't feel like a huge issue to me. Um, there, there were like, like there were some one or two. He had an interception against Notre Dame where he kind of threw the ball blindly over the middle of the field. Um, but again, that was that was a result of him trying to do too much with no structure around him and, and kind of pressured immediately. Kind of like the interception that we did see, mm -hmm. uh, where he was kind of having to go off script immediately and try to make something happen. And that's when he got into kind of trying to force it over the middle. Um, but generally speaking, when, when he has time and he's able to deliver from the pocket, then, then I don't, I, I haven't, it certainly didn't stand out as like a, oh, he's not seeing the field well. Um, so I, I don't foresee that being a huge issue for it. No. Gotcha. Got a comment from Trell. Trell said, I really wasn't a Caleb Williams fan until a few months ago. His pocket performance is very underrated. Trell, I agree with you. Uh, people only discuss his highlight plays. Um, I love the fact that we had the opportunity. Mark, thank you for coming on and show us this all 22. It's obviously great to break it down. I love the throw after the catch. I love the, um, just the poise in the pocket. I think the lack of paranoia in the pocket was something that impressed me from watching this film today. Um, I got another question from Trell. Trell said, you mentioned Hero Ball. Um, what percentage is him versus USC's play designs or calls? So I guess tendencies, Mark, like, you know, was he one to kind of bail on the play or was it mostly USC's play designs? What are your thoughts on that? <clears throat> I, I felt it was mostly the kind of play designs or calls. Um, mm -hmm. I, I felt like kind of, as I said, the whole time is, is the structure hasn't been there for him to consistently get out of bad plays. Um, and so when when a route is covered, he, he doesn't always have an out. And then he has to go off script and, and try to create and, and play hero ball. Um, now, as we talked about, there there are times every now and again where there was an option open and, and he did go hunting for the big play himself. Um, and that's a habit that he'll have to get out of. But um, I think that is a habit born from the, the lack of structure around him um, that, that provides him with enough outs to to not need to do that quite so often um so kind of once you get into a habit of like okay i don't trust my protection okay i don't really trust the routes that are being run i'm gonna have to go hero ball you kind of get into a mentality of i need to do this every play a habit. and mm -hmm. exactly it becomes a habit and 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 that's when it becomes an issue um but i i think there is enough from caleb to see that when provided with good structure when provided with better protection um he won't just default to oh i'm going to scramble around um you know the the base is really good there the 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 readiness to throw um as we kind of talked about how sound and, and calm his feet are his feet are always in the ground ready to deliver the ball um and he's he's always ready like if his first read's not there his, his feet are immediately lined up to his next read and, and ready to get the ball out um and and that speaks to me of a guy that's ready to operate from the pocket at the next level um, with better structure, obviously, around him. Gotcha. And first time listeners of the show, I, I can attest, Mark has kind of mentioned or kind of alluded to USC's offense being kind of misstructured, not necessarily well designed a couple of weeks ago. So I kind of knew this was coming. So it's definitely interesting to hear that. Um, Mark, I got two questions for you, then we'll wrap it up. Um, first question I'll ask from you is, um, in regard to Caleb Williams, uh, give me like a one or two sentence summary of what we saw today. Like what would be one of his positives you take away, one area of growth that you have for him? <clears throat> yeah, so the the biggest positive I wanted everyone to take away from this was he's a guy that isn't just this scramble around 
make plays off script, play hero ball kind of guy. He, he was a guy that um, he has some really, really sound fundamentals, like the base and the footwork. It's not quite Andrew Luck level when Andrew Luck was coming out, but it's also not a million miles away from that. And it's better than the vast majority of other quarterbacks coming out of college. Um, and, and that gives him a real sound fundamental based or platform to build off of and into the rest of his game. Um, and then you also see, you know, the arm strength and, and the accuracy, particularly the ball placement. Like he, he is so frequently getting that ball out in front of receivers and, and letting them run onto the ball. Um, and he's not, he's not always just throwing a hundred miles an hour. He's able to take some stuff off of it. As we saw, he's able to, to hit different windows. He can sometimes rip it into the first window, but he's also patient and can hit in the second window or sometimes third window. I love that. He, he's always ready to hit a guy in stride. Um, and so he's certainly a guy that is capable of winning from the pocket, but obviously the off, the off script stuff is, is a lot of fun and nice to, <laughs> nice to have as well. All right. Last question I'll post for you. We can wrap it up for the day. So this question comes from Doug McCray. Um, he basically referenced that, um, you know, we talked about it. I, I walking away, I think Caleb Williams is clearly the most talented quarterback in the draft. I thought he really popped to me from what I saw from the film studies so far. Um, is he worth a trade up to number one, in your opinion? Would you go chasing after him if you're Washington? I would certainly call okay. um, and see what the Bears would want. I if, But with a Bears hat on, I'm thinking, why, why would I move off this guy? Absolutely. Uh, like... Unless I'm thinking like I can get a haul and I want to, I really, really like Justin Fields and, and I'm ready to pay him right now um, because that's whoever's taking Justin Fields is going to have to pay him. Um, then, you know, maybe they do that, but I, 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 or, or maybe they're like scared about, you know, maybe that USC offense has broken him a little bit and he's too much into the hero ball mentality and they can't get him out of it. I, I still think it's very unlikely that they, they are thinking that way. I, I, I would say it's probably a 95, 98% chance they're thinking this guy is really, really good and, and we're going to keep him. Um, so, yeah, I'd be shocked if the Bears moved off of it, but I would 100%. If I'm Washington, I would definitely call and I would check in regularly, being like, hey, are you, you willing to listen? Uh, or, you know, what's it going to take? Um, and, and figure that out. And if it's a, if it's a reasonable price, um, I'm not going to go do an RG3 trade for him because I, I think that just puts the franchise at too much risk not being able to build around the guy. Um, but if it's, a, you know, their second round pick back and a one next year, I'd probably do it. Gotcha. Thank you, Mark. So first of all, we're, we're going to start wrapping it up right now. So Mark, first of all, thank you for the breakdown. I love the amount of time and work you put into it. You, def you definitely can break down some complex con concepts into something very simple. So I appreciate that. Uh, thank you to everyone in the chat, Colin, Trell, David, uh, Jason, Arch. I appreciate all the comments in the chat as well. Uh, we are here every Tuesday at 4.30 doing a Commander's Film Breakdown. Uh, free agency essentially starts next Monday. We might start breaking down some free agents coming over to Washington. Uh, but if there are any prospects that you're interested in, we have a very long offseason. So please message us and comment us in the, you know, in the, on Twitter. Let us know who you want us to break down because, you know, we, we enjoy doing this too. So thank you, everybody. I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Have a great night. Peace.